<laughs> Barbara, Barbara Randolph, you are tickling me something serious on today. Uh, she's been uh, she's been a firm man plumbing on the keys and otherwise guiding us in worship. And she shared with us for those of you who are just joining uh, that she received a shirt from the grandkids that says uh, "blessed" uh, because that is the word that indeed she says all the time, uh, which is a reminder to us as she shared with one another that we are blessed. We've got a testimony indeed. Actually, testimony is gonna be our, our hymn of invitation following the sermon. As we now uh, come to the close of 2021, uh, which to be sure has been a tumultuous year, uh, but still as we gather on this Sunday, the last Sunday of 2021, uh, the first Sunday of Christmas, we give thanks and we look back over our lives and this year, despite the challenges, despite the hardships, despite the pain, and indeed we declare that we are truly blessed. We have a testimony and we are blessed by the gift of the Christ child indeed, who has been born again in our hearts and we rejoice. I'm Pastor Jay Williams. We welcome you to Union Church. Our sanctuary building is in Boston in the South End, but indeed sanctuary is wherever you are, be it uh, if you're in Brazil or in Mexico or in Boston where I am or in Brattleboro, Vermont or Michigan, Brooklyn, wherever you are, sanctuary is and we gather uh, together as family and we give thanks, we give thanks. At Union, we invite one and all to text in church. You know the routine for those of you who join us weekly, regularly, uh, use the chat to talk back if you haven't already done so. Go ahead and name in the chat who you are, where you're calling in from. Uh, and and um, that helps us to get a sense of what is going on. You can download a copy of the bulletin at unionboston.org forward slash online. We're live on Facebook. We've got live transcriptions uh, for those who may be uh, audio uh, impaired and are, are visual learners like I am uh, having the words uh, pop up. You can use that. So we are glad uh, to be here on this Sunday. Indeed, in the life of the church, um, and many of you know, uh, Plummet is playing um, uh, one of the Christmas carols, one of the Christmas hymns that we sing, right, the 12 days of Christmas, uh, remind us that yes, Christmas day has happened, but indeed in the season of Christmas, it extends from the 25th of December into January. So we extend the season of celebration uh, and give thanks for all that God is doing on this day. It's also worth noting that today is the first day of Kwanzaa, the first day of Kwanzaa, which is the celebration in the African-American tradition uh, that lifts up seven principles that highlight uh, the resilience of Black people um, and uh, lighting the candles that call us together uh, as we have lit the candles of Advent already that call us together. So today, the principle we celebrate is umoja, which means unity. How very good it is when the beloved gather together in unity, uh, says Psalm 133. So we gather union uh, for this celebration of worship, for this celebration of family, indeed for this celebration of Christmas. We give thanks as we seek to carry on the mantle uh, that has been passed to us by those like Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who you may have seen a uh, transition from this life to the life everlasting uh, in uh, the early uh, hours of this day. Um, uh, 90 years young, but one who has fought against apartheid and for justice in so many ways, indeed has been a beacon of light. So during this season of light, uh, we, we remember him, we give thanks, and we use this service as a time of figuring out in the midst of so much pain and uncertainty of, of figuring out how we might go from here uh, to there as we embody God's word through Christ Jesus. So this service, beloved, as we enter in uh, might be one that closes out a year as we look towards a new year, and now on this day after Christmas Day, I uh, wonder what uh, Mary and Joseph uh, had on their hearts 
on that Christmas uh, morn. Uh, for us, uh, we wake up with our minds stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's make this our opening praise. My name is Ruby Blake, and our first scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew 1, 
verses 18, 18 through 25, the inclusive Bible. A reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. When Jesus's mother, Mary, was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, an upright person unwilling to disgrace her, decided to divorce her quietly. This was Joseph's intention when suddenly the angel of God appeared in a dream and said, Joseph, heir to the house of David, don't be afraid to wed Mary. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, salvation, because he will save the people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what God has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth, and the child will be named Emmanuel, a name that means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of God had directed, and they went ahead with the marriage. He did not have intercourse with her until she had given birth. She had a son, and they named him Jesus. So in the lesson. Union, this is a reading 
from the letter to the churches at Colossae, chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, as rendered in the Inclusive Bible. Hear these words. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive in the same way that God has forgiven you. Above all else, put on love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. Let Christ's peace reign in your heart since as members of one body, you have been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. Instruct and admonish one another wisely. Sing gratefully to God from your hearts in psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. And whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it all in the name of Jesus, our Savior, giving thanks to God through Christ. This is the word of God spoken for us, the word of God living among us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come. Oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. You know, um, I, I think after a rendition like that, I might become one of those uh, persons that is uh, singing uh, Christmas songs in the middle of the year, in like June and July, uh, because that is um, such a powerful rendition that uh, indeed we can sing it again and again and we give thanks. I echo uh, some of the preaching that has gone on in the chat. Uh, particularly uh, Tanya, who, you know, just uh, how good it is to hear Brother Cleve, a member of our community who lives in Atlanta, uh, and for the way in which our ensemble has come together, I would be remiss uh, if I did not give another shout out as I did on Friday uh, with Thanksgiving uh, to those who made it possible. That uh, came together in just a week. We actually were requested uh, for uh, by the conference um, uh, by the superintendents uh, who put together a Christmas tide uh, service uh, that uh, is actually being played uh, throughout uh, the country uh, on today, giving preachers and, and worship leaders a time off uh, during this season. So there was a pre recorded service, and we were asked uh, because of the many gifts at Union that we might uh, have a virtual choir that would open the service. Uh, so we give thanks that, uh, oh come all you faithful, open the service uh, for New England. And then it turns out that that uh, service was picked up by the United Methodist News Service of our denomination. Um, and it's going out beyond not only New England, so union. Uh, your ministry, your faithfulness extends beyond Boston. I see people clapping. I see people giving thanks. Um, so we give thanks uh, to, uh, particularly to Plamen, our maestro. Sometimes I think he gets sick of me calling him, uh, making all of these last minute requests. Um, uh, but thank you for being uh, faithful in all things. Uh, to the voices, uh, Bob and Angela, who did the recordings um, so that the ensemble, the virtual choir could come together. We give you thanks for your voice. Uh, to Robert for your creativity. Uh, and a, another artistic expression of this great story, we give you thanks. So everybody put your hands together for this incredible uh, ministry uh, that is indeed a gift this Christmas and every week. Sometimes uh, because God is so faithful uh, to us, we can almost take for granted that which we have, uh, but we don't take these gifts for granted. Uh, we take a little bit of extra time to celebrate and give thanks uh, even as we uh, take rest during this season. Thanks be to God indeed. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and holy one, uh, we are here yet again uh, with an attitude of thanksgiving, an attitude of gratitude in our spirits because you have given us the gift, the best gift of it all, in the birth of your son, our savior, Jesus, who is our salvation. Now be with us as we seek uh, to offer again uh, an echo of what we preached on Christmas Eve, indeed uh, a word that is uh, for us this season, so that this Christmas might count even more. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be found acceptable, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ that we pray. Let all God's people say, amen, amen. So beloved, here is the good news. Christ is born in that little town of Bethlehem. Beloved, here's the good news that no matter Delta nor Omicron or the Gamma or Beta variants before them, there is still an Alpha and an Omega who is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And no matter the trouble, God, who is beyond time, who is the creator of time, breaks into time, takes human form, and transforms time for all time. 
and check this out too. The news is only as good as we tell it. The good news is only as good as we tell it on the mountain and over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. So let us tell it with our singing. Let us tell it with our preaching. Let us tell it with our living that the birth of the Savior saves us. Not his death, but his life. It is the birth and the life of Christ that saves us. I need you to hear me today, Union, for Christianity, Christmas in many ways is actually more important than Easter. Even though the tradition and our celebrations has uh, made uh, Easter into the main event, in many ways, Christmas is actually the main event because the incarnation of God the in-breaking of God from beyond time into time is that which heals the brokenness of humanity by setting into motion a series of events that transforms everything. You see, without the birth of Christ, there is no life of Christ. And without the life of Christ, there is no crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. So without the birth of Christ, there is no crucifixion and resurrection or life after death. So it is the foundation of the Christmas story that is the foundation of the Christian story. And that is the coming into life of God through Christ Jesus, who is our salvation. The one who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So let's live and let's do life together, Union. You see, on my mind this morning, the day after Christmas Day, during the second day of Christmas Tide, on my mind is what does it really mean for us that Jesus is born? Why do we go through this ritual every year and why does it matter? as we celebrate this birth. Uh, what we, I, I'm wondering today whether this Christmas will be any different than all the rest. And I, I wonder whether we will embody Howard Thurman's poem, The Work of Christmas, which says this, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost and heal the broken, to feed the hungry and release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, and to make music. In the heart. Beloved Union, it seems to me that the work of Christmas is as important now as it's ever been, perhaps even more than ever before. On my mind this morning is the question, now that the Christ child is born again in the world and in our hearts. Now that the Christ child is born again, will we be the ones who nurture sweet baby Jesus? I know the parents in the room, perhaps Kia can tell it better than I can. Babies need nurturing and tending and care. So, so the question for us this morning, now that the Christ child is born, that baby Jesus is born, we all must ask ourselves, will we participate in the work of Christmas and will we be the nurturers? Will we be the caregivers? 
Will we be those who tend and nurture and raise up this infant message of the incarnation of the Christ, of word made flesh? And will we raise up this message, this word, into an embodied maturity that changes and transforms the world? It seems to me that as so many giants have fallen this year, Archbishop Desmond Tutu this morning, Bell Hooks last week, the great lyricist and poet and activist, Bob Moses, the civil rights leader, Michael K. Williams, the actor who humanized some of the roughest parts of our reality, all, so many more we could go on and on, even in our own community. Cheryl Shepard, who passed a few weeks ago, as so many giants have fallen, it seems to me that it's time, perhaps even past time, for more to rise up those who would inhabit and embody the best hope of this season. The best hope of that enfleshment, embodiment, that's hope and peace and love and joy. So this Christmas, let us make this one count. You see, there is a beautiful tension in this season where on the one hand we adorn and decorate and go all out. And that is greeted also by the simplicity of the story. On Christmas Eve, I preached the message of Christmas that, that if we listen to the story, we see revealed a beautiful splendor that, that, that holds this beautiful tension between the extraordinary and the ordinary, between all of the adornment and wonder and the basicness of the message. That Christmas reveals the splendor of simplicity, right? Simple town of Bethlehem. Simple people, the shepherds. And then the story tells us that Jesus is wrapped in a simple cloth. And Jesus is born, right? In the simplest of months, the time of the year. Not in the, the, the abundance and the opulence of summer and spring, not in the bounty of the harvest of fall, but that Christ is born in the barrenness of winter. So one of the gifts then as we hone in on the simplicity of the story that reflects this invitation to just be, to rest, to take a break because God breaks in to heal our broken heart. Amidst all of the beauty and the splendor and the grandeur of this season, one of the gifts it seems to me of Christmas is that both things can be true at the same time. The splendor of the amazement of gifts and lights and trees and decorations and the beauty of simplicity revealed in that simple town of Bethlehem and simple cloth that Jesus is wrapped in and simple presence of those nomadic shepherds who had not much, but came with what they had. All revealing to us the simple message that is the greatest wonder of it all. The message of approximate savior that God comes into wor the world to be close to us, 
so that we might be close and proximate to one another. So we might be together for one another. Matthew's gospel heard again today tells us what happens in the splendor of that simple night so long ago that we reclaim. And it says that she, Mary, is to have a son and is to be named Jesus, Messiah, salvation, because he will save the people from their sins. Jesus, salvation, and it seems to me that in this simple story of simple shepherds and town and cloth, that salvation is simple too, that salvation is not some complex set of creeds and rules and regulations, but rather the simplicity of salvation is that we are called to the work of Christmas, which is the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is very simple too. We heard it recorded in the letter to the churches of Colossians. So this is the heart of the message, this simple sermon. As 2021 comes to an end and we make our intentions for 2022, perhaps then, the simple account of Christian salvation of freedom, of liberation, of turning, of transformation. The simple account of salvation that is recorded in Colossians 3 might be helpful. Might be helpful for we, the faithful ones who come during this season, as we give thanks for all that has been, as we set with intention for that which might be in the coming year. The simple reminder Colossians 3 might be helpful as we get our hearts right and set our minds on that which is ahead, it says, because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with heartfelt compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another and forgive in the same way God has forgiven you. And above all else, put on love, which binds us together and makes the rest perfect. Let Christ's peace reign in your hearts since as members of one body, you have been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness and let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. Instruct and admonish one another wisely, sing gratefully to God from your hearts, psalms and hymns and songs of the spirit. And whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it in the name of Jesus, our Savior, giving thanks to God through Christ. So that's the message. That's the sermon, simple as it is. You are chosen. You are holy. And you are beloved. That's the simple message, the sermon that comes to us from the lectionary appointed for this day. This first Sunday of Christmas, this last Sunday of 2021. Be kind, be humble, be gentle. Because Paul is right, you are created in love you are called to peace. So let us together be committed to gratitude. And whatever we do, whether in speech or in action, let us instruct and admonish and gratefully in our hearts, whatever we do, 
whatever we do, let us do it in the name of the one who saves us by coming close, by coming into the world so that we might come close to one another and by our living, put on love and love others into the freedom of salvation that we know and cherish in our hearts. So may this be our hymn. May this be our song. And may this be our testimony. Let all God's people say, Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Yes, beloved, I am so glad that we have made it. So glad that we made it because the good news, like Pastor Jay said, is that Christ was born. And that was enough. <laughs> that Christ was born just like we are born and we are enough. Beloved, just as we are. And beloved, we made it because God is truly with us. God is with us. And beloved, we are at a place, this place we call un this place we call union, where we sing this good news, where we preach this good news, and where we live this good news together. This is a place where we do the work of Christmas where we try to make Christmas count, where we nurture that sweet baby Jesus who was with us, who was born among us and born within us. This Christ child who comes to save us so that as Pastor Jay said, God comes into the world to be close to us so that we may be close to one another. This is a place where we encounter God together so that God can bind us and form us into the body of Christ to be God's hands and feet in the world, to be the beloved community together. So beloved, the invitation is this, that if you wanna go deeper, if you want to connect deeper with this community, to join in formal membership, you may go to unionboston.org slash join to talk to a pastor, to get connected to a small group, to get connected to this community where we can be Christ together. So beloved, the doors of the church are open. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Good afternoon, Union. I'm Valerie Berry, and it is time for the offering.
Here at Union, we have three ways to give. You may give online, unionboston.org forward slash give. Or you can text to give any dollar amount to 84321. And we also accept checks at Union. So you may mail your check to Union United Methodist Church, 485 Columbus Avenue, Boston, Mass, 02118. Your support gives to our missions and ministries. Please give and know that you are also giving to Jesus Christ the Lord. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Indeed, beloved, uh, we give thanks, we give thanks, we give thanks uh, for your faithfulness uh, throughout this season, throughout this year. Uh, go ahead and put your hands together for yourselves uh, because God uh, has been a blessing uh, to union through you, through your generosity. Um, and, 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 and we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Uh, we are grateful. Um, and um, 
Uh, we've been able to help so many people uh, this year uh, by our presence in worship, through our music, uh, through our ministry, uh, and then also in, in meeting material needs of people from uh, assisting with mortgage support, uh, transition to new apartments, uh, to food, and it's because of you for this community uh, called Union. So we say thank you. Uh, we just want to offer one final opportunity for you to give and be a blessing unto others as the year end closes. Go to unionboston.org forward slash year end. Uh, you can read a letter there. Um, the link is in the chat uh, as we are raising money uh, to launch our love and liberation fund. More to come on that at the beginning of the year. Uh, but we are uh, pushing forward with our uh, 501c3 uh, launching of Centers for Faith and Liberation, our community center, uh, so that the work that we've begun uh, from our building renovation to the parsonage renovation and, and being a, a physical place that offers transformation in the South End and in Roxbury, the Love and the Liberation Fund project is uh, going to uh, further support that. So we're almost at our goal. Uh, if everybody gave $100 uh, or more, we would uh, reach our goal of $50,000. We're at $37,000 uh, now. Uh, still opportunity for you to give uh, stock gifts, or if you need to speak to me, um, uh, do reach out. And um, yes, as we reach this uh, goal for 50K for our year-end appeal. Also want to uh, you to know, join us for worship on Friday, 6.30, also online. We will be having our watch night service, our New Year's Eve service at 6.30 p.m. Log on with this link. It'll be a time of testimony. So bring your, your testimony if you want to share aloud or in the chat uh, so that we might uh, give thanks for God's faithfulness during this year as we intend uh, to do even more for Christ and with one another in the year to come. Our 2022 Martin Luther King Memorial Breakfast uh, will be on January the 17th. Our keynote is Dr. Annette Gordon-Reed, hybrid event in person and online. Please get your tickets, uh, register so that we can hold a seat for you, either a virtual seat or a seat at the actual table in the convention center. Of course, uh, we are taking all precautions around um, uh, COVID and the like, and are still leaning into this hybrid experience uh, together. Uh, I think that draws everything to a close on this Sunday. Uh, so we go out singing our closing hymn, uh, a hymn of the season during this season of Christmas tide, tide. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us make this our closing hymn.
Indeed, beloved, let us be joy in the world. Because at Christmas, the proximate savior comes into the world so that we might come close to one another as we put on love and really make this Christmas count. Now may the love of God and the grace of our newborn savior, Jesus Christ, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. Pastor Kyle, you can unmute the lines. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.